So, let's see what we got going on here. We've got Endor Ops. We've got Legend. Is this... Nope, no, not... This is straight up Endor Ops. All right, so Greg's going to be starting with Establish, Combat Response, Non-Virtual, and Imperial Arrest Order Combo. All right. And Legend's going to be playing a Brave Resistance. Rebellions are built on hope and a walkling. So this is the Legend deck that we've seen quite a bit of uh, since Greg piloted it very successfully at the uh, North American Continental Championship all the way to a victory. We'll see what tweaks and twists Silver Glen has put on it. We'll say good luck to both players, and off we go. Uh, the Endor Ops build uh, here should be interesting as well. We haven't seen a whole lot of Endor Ops in the playoffs, non-TTO, of course. Um, but Endor Ops is a solid deck. The flip side of the objective, if he's flipping, uh, has some incredible bonuses. I don't know how much they'll come into play here. But, uh, you know, opponent draws no more than one battle destiny in each battle everywhere is uh, incredibly strong, but it does require you to have ominous and established control both on the table. Uh, we'll see what exactly Greg gets up to here. Combat response non-V uh, suggests TIE Fighters. Uh, probably uh, in the Scythe guys, Meanda and whatnot. Um, and then they can probably Talon roll. Um, maybe black two, black five, that kind of stuff. So I will be bringing you coverage tonight of game number one, depending on how time-wise goes for this game. Uh, they may play game number two right afterwards, in which case Dan Tartaglione will be tagging in, and he'll be streaming game number two if he's feeling up for it. He's been a bit under the weather the last couple of days. Um, he's blaming his Jawa Cup uh, defeat on uh, his illness. Uh, if they have to move the game due to time, because it's uh, you know 10:30 at night in the UK already, so uh, just getting a 30-minute late start certainly does uh, push thing could push things back a little bit. Then they would play game number two tomorrow at the same time at 5 p.m. Eastern time, or as close to that as uh, <laughs> they can get. All right, so we've got Endor Shield pulls for Piet and Ozel, and here's combat response for Black Two does have to be a little bit careful with the profundity. That opening hand profundity uh, would cost only three. Uh, two plus the one from, from the Endor system to drop that right away. Uh, this is more of a, uh, a quick pressure style of deck. With the Endor Ops. You get a tie out to the system pretty quickly and cheaply. Uh, Piet goes here. Uh, Ozel usually goes to this docking bay. Piet can pull you either the commander to get Meanda or the Admiral's order to make the ship immune to, to more and add to the force drain at the docking bay. Um, and then Piet will docking bay transit over for free. And you kind of do all this for five, and then you're threatening drains of two and two right off the bat. Uh, certainly a big... Uh, high risk, high reward kind of situation. You put a lot of early pressure on your opponent, um, but you do leave yourself a little bit vulnerable because these aren't things that have the best power. Uh, your opponent is activating seven force. We know he's got a profundity that deploys for three. Um, it's not immune to any attrition or anything, though, but um, it's not really enough for turn one to put too many guys down on it. There's a second rescue in the clouds. Uh, that we've seen Silver Glen play now, so he's had uh, a few options to peek at some stuff. But yeah, I mean, like even, you know, Profundity Poe, which would be incredibly strong, uh, costs seven because of the plus one from Endor, so he would not have the extra force he needs to battle. 
Uh, if he had battle plan, draw their fire as like a f an effect, uh, then it might be a little bit more concerning. All right, Silverglund's going to send Ray to the used pile with the Brave Resistance. See which character he wants to take. Poe seems like a pretty good candidate. He may also be interested in Solo. Or General Leia. Could go ground early. Could go... I mean, this can go EPP battle. Um, he takes Poe. Um, you could go EPP Obi, or you could Brave Resistance into EPP Ray. Battle, swing, hit one, clear the other one. So, certainly are some options there. Let's just refresh this real quick, just to make sure I'm not missing out on any chat comments. There's about 15 of you watching right now, but uh, nobody talking. All right, he's got the Maz's, the 1-0 site. We'll see if he gets the Hut and the Luke out. They can use a force to relocate. I guess it wasn't... This gets the Maz's castle site. I guess he can pull location with the objective as well. So I guess the... Uh, all right. He's going Profundity, which is going to get barriered. Just to make sure it couldn't battle. Okay. I don't know that he would have had anything that he could have battled with, but you never know who he might find to sneak on there as a pilot. Yeah. Well, I mean, Rops was kind of uh, a given. Plus, you know, he was watching the Hollow Theater show and saw the over under uh, on the Rops data. So it's nice to uh, nice to mix it up. Obviously, not have to uh, commentate on another. Uh, Rops matchup, but I think uh, you know sometimes when you're especially in match play and things like that, you, you start to get into the mind game. Uh, you go down the rabbit hole of well, if they think I'm going to play this, then what are they going to play, and then what can I play that'll beat that? And yeah, so you always try and stay uh, a couple steps ahead and see where you end up. All right, so Greg is going to use the Piet pole, and he is going to get Meanda. Major Meanda is a commander. He's a commander of a TIE squadron. Um, he adds three to power as well, and his gun shoots uh, capitals. So this thing, which is armor seven, could get shot down here. Meanda adds two. To the total weapon destiny, the gun itself doesn't add anything. It's a little harder to shoot. He would need to draw a six to hit it. That doesn't seem right. But I think it is. Maybe there's some other cards that add or subtract. And you have to go move furniture. Well, thanks for stopping by, Wurfs. Uh, good luck with that. have to scout out your have to watch the replays to scout out your uh, potential finalist matchup Chris Wirfs will be playing his second game I believe later this evening um, against Bastion I think they're set for another like 10:30 p.m. Pacific time uh, start We'll see if Dan's up for doing that one, or Jerry will be around to do that one, perhaps, once he gets off work. I don't know. We'll figure something out. I always do a replay link tomorrow morning. All right, so Shaw's going to look for a docking bay. He's got the 1-0 docking bay, looking to see, what, I'm sure, what other matching ships might be available to him. Yeah, because combat response... Any unpiloted starfighter and or matching one. The advantage of the virtual one is it lets ties relocate as if they had hyperspeed three. But uh, the downside is is that you can't play Talon roll with that. So when you see the non-virtual one, 
The only real reason you'd see anybody doing that is that they were probably running Talon rolls, and then that immediately tells you, what would he be playing to Talon roll? You can only use Ty Lens to do that, so there's got to be a couple of them in there. All right, so we've got Hebsley. Deploys minus two. Once during each of your move phases, may fire one starship weapon aboard. Same thing as the other guy, but when he's piloting it, he can subtract one from maneuver of opponent's starfighter at same location. So he only works on maneuver. That's not as good. Not as like it's defense value or something. He only, so he doesn't really help against capitals. And now we've got the admiral's order out, which says if they don't have both a starfighter and a capital, their power each of their ships are power minus two. But at sites, opponent draws no more than one destiny. So you kind of overlap a little bit with the objective. We haven't seen Ominous or Establish come out yet, so highly unlikely he's playing them. And it does let you get combat vehicles. So he will use that. He'll pull Tempest Scout 2, which deploys cheaper to Endor. Deploy minus 1 for Endors. And then these guys will probably get inside as pilots. There's a Dark Maneuvers Talon Roll to add to power and maneuver. Could possibly be setting up a short-range fighter combo. Because that's going to pump it up to maneuver 7, because DS-61-2 adds one. Whether or not he wants to... Because Poe only forfeits for 6. So if he battles here, which he does, see if he's got like an all-power to weapons or something to make the ties immune. Not that he necessarily will need it, but actually he probably would because they're getting two destiny here. He could definitely use the extra power as well. Nope, he's just going to spin a seven and take his chances on what he loses. And it'll get rid of Poe and the ship. And we'll see what Dark Side draws with their two. Ouch. That's a rough start. It's immune to less than four when Hebsley's piloting. And then he draws Leia. That that was terrible for Silver Glen. I'll just sugar won't sugarcoat it. That was absolutely dreadful. because uh, the ties themselves have some natural immunity built in. So two destiny, he draws a one. Greg wins the battle, loses nothing and clears Poe and the Profundity. Uh, it's a very good start for Greg, good investment of his opening hand resources, and uh, certainly is going to set Silver Glen back a little bit. Not at all the, uh, the opening I'm sure he was looking for. And Greg is going to land the tie, and Hebsley's going to hop inside the Tempest Scout, as well as Piet. That's curious. They both add two to the power of anything they pilot, so okay. Well, I guess the tie isn't giving him a whole lot extra power because it's basically only power one because of the battle deployment objective, so. He might as well have some extra power and forfeit available on the ground. Uh, Silverglund's certainly going to have to fish for any additional ships he might be running. It's probably a good chance there's a gold leader in gold one and a Tantive, I would guess. Uh, the Profundity start, more likely to be leaning toward Tanev for map or ROPS. ROPS being a likely choice for Greg to play, map just being a solid dark side deck that we haven't really seen in the OCS much. And then Gold Leader to take advantage of the flip text with the whole redraw thing and having to pay for it.
Silverland also having a little, uh, didn't quite get his activation up and going just yet. He's got to get his Octo Saddle. He's got to get his Luke out. That'll help his activation. Uh, then he's got to get that Jakku system that he drew for Destiny out as well. Excuse me. It's also the thing with these uh, match play format style events, especially when you can switch decks between rounds, like you're allowed to in this format. Uh, you know, you start getting into that game of, uh, of switching things up, trying to catch people off guard, not trying to be predictable. You know your opponent's going to have a strategy, even if they don't make necessarily like specific deck choices, even just having a strategy of knowing uh, a comfort level of how to play against a certain deck uh, is certainly an advantage. I'm sure this is a deck that Silver Glen probably hasn't seen too much of. So, you know, the in-game decision-making, I'm sure maybe he might, if you ask him after this game's over, what would you do differently? I'm sure there's five things that he'll tell you, like, I wish I didn't do that, and I wish this had done differently, and maybe I should have just drawn instead of deploying the profundity. Yeah, all kinds of things there. All right, so he's got Jakku out now. So that'll get him three more activation because of a brave resistance. Or do you have to occupy for that now? Yep, you have to occupy. All right, so he gets two now. I'll probably get a ship over here in the next turn or two and get himself a third card. But in the meantime, Greg will just continue to drain. He'll be doing two and one. And we'll see if he has any type of uh, additional support now to back up black two. Silverland's top decking. He's keeping the 13 cards in his hand. He loses Were You Looking For Me and a Gungan Energy Shield. Okay, so we can immediately think that this is not uh, at all the similar style build to what uh, the conventional build is, the KTOD build that uh, people played at Worlds and that Greg used at Continentals. Gungan Energy Shield, certainly an interesting card. Goes on any exterior site. A lot of people always think it has to go on Naboo on the battle planes. It's just where most people tend to put it because it's easier to set up there. But Fambas, you can pull with uh, Wisa got a grand army. Uh, your characters can't be targeted by weapons. Their battle destiny draws are minus one. And then they have to use extra force for moving to or from here. So it's a good place to stack up, especially if you have guys that uh, are immune to attrition, like Immunity Jedi. Um, Then they can't be targeted by weapons, they're immune to attrition, and your opponent's battle destiny draws are minus one, so it's harder to outpower them. Uh, you can't play episode one locations, though, or just Luke. You can play other Jedi. So, you know, you can set up episode seven sites. You know, you can put a Qui-Gon and a mace or something out there.
Probably a Qui-Gon. Master Qui-Gon, completely immune to attrition and uh, get Leia, get Rose, those kinds of people go in there to get some retrieval, get the four strain bonus from the flip side of the objective. That's certainly an interesting take. So we're seeing some interesting uh, variations on some classic objectives so far in this matchup. Right, seven force for the dominator. This guy's got hyperspeed four. You can put laser cannon battery on it and it can fire twice. Ooh. That's also very good at shooting capitals. Uh and it has a permanent pilot of ability two, which always comes in handy, but most importantly it can hold two TIE fighters. So this is good at moving stuff around, especially to get from Endor to Jakku, eight to four. Now it looks like he's going to flip-flop some people around. Hebley's going to get out, get back in the tie. The tie's going to take off. The tie doesn't take off. Okay. Well, way to prove me wrong, Greg. I'm not quite sure what he was trying to accomplish there by getting Hebsley out. I would have thought he took Hebsley out of the chicken walker to put him... Unless he's afraid of Leia with a gun. That could be a thing, too. Because uh, Leia with her blaster could shoot the uh, Tempest Scout, make the whole thing lost, and then it would just be Ozl sitting there, you know, just waving as he gets the crap kicked out of him. So by taking Hebsley out, he goes, it guarantees himself four ability to be able to draw Destiny, unless he's got two weapons that remove people. And Rose goes back, and we do see the Leia upload. Now he's going to get the Luke out. The other thing people always forget about Legend as well is they do get a once-per-game take-anyone card into hand from Force Pile. So once per game, you get a Tunnel Vision. Uh, he's probably not going to do it this turn since he already spent some Force deploying Luke. But we'll see if he has another Ray or anything handy that he might then deploy somebody and go fishing through his use pile um, and see if he can't set up that general Leia gun combo and retrieve some cards in the process. Yeah, this looks like a no-flip version. Uh, Greg would have had Ominous and Established out by now if he was going for the flip. This is more of a a speed setup. We've seen decks like this in the past, uh, mostly from Team Minnesota, so no surprise that this might be uh, a new Allies upgrade. Silvergren takes Force Projection into hand from Reserve Deck. This is the card that Luke lets you get, that if Luke's at a site, everybody at another site, they all get to be defense value 5. Or, if Luke is out of play, an opponent is through destiny, you can draw and subtract that from their total. So it's like a once-per-game bright hope kind of thing. But that only works if Luke's out of play. However, if Luke is in play, you get to use the text on the saddle here and subtract 2 from their total power. So at least it's a little something. Uh, an incentive to keep Luke around for a couple turns just until you're ready to do the, the flip and get that thing. A lot of people rush to the flip because they want to get to the 7 side, uh, which is certainly a very powerful side of the objective. Um, it limits their immunity everywhere to less than 5. You get the 4 strain plus 1 where you've got 2 resistance guys. You get to do the manipulation of peeking at the top card of the force and 
there we go. Uh, force and reserve decks, look and see where you want, and then you can put them together on either pile. And then you know what you're going to draw for Battle Destiny, or you just have an extra force to work with. Uh, good way to also set up and stack two cards together so that you can then cycle through later for a future turn if you want to know where they are. Uh, but then most importantly is the once per turn during battle, cancel an opponent's just drawn destiny to cause a redraw. That is certainly a very powerful mechanic. The other thing I do want to check here is to see if they go back to the top. Alright, so it uh, so Shaw requested that the action timer be disabled because thinking ahead for Silver Glen, the question is is whether or not Silver Glen did it as well. It doesn't look like he did. Silver Glen was saying that he would have to, if he has to take a break to go feed the baby, uh, Jemp has a hidden five-minute action timer if you don't take an action uh, within five minutes it automatically times you out and you lose and that would certainly be dreadful especially this early on in the game trying to figure out what's going on I know he turned off his notifications but I'll I reminded him before the game started to make sure he turned off his, his action timer. So hopefully if they do decide to take a break, they uh, he remembers to hit it. Alright, Silvergun goes to the move phase. And Shaw's going to pull the firepower combo. So the shield here because opponent... You control a site in a system. An opponent deployed a card with ability and did not battle. He gets to retrieve a force. And Greg saved a couple. He pulled the aim high to make him pay for it. So Greg will get to retrieve his short range combo. Silver Glen did not draw any other cards. Saved nine force. He's going to get 14 next turn, which is going to be most of what his deck is. And then he'll probably do his once per game peak then. Um, there's an OB off the top and another OB off the top ouch good you're not drawing him for destiny but you just lost both OB-1 Kenobis oh a surprise assault does he have a cold feet to cancel it or is he about to get wrecked for the strain of one Uh-oh. This could get Silver Glen right back in the game. Ouch. Good thing he didn't draw those two Obi-Wans. Uh, so we're going to recap all this in a second once we see the draws here. But this is going to be very bad for Mr. Shaw. He does have a Falcon. But she is going to starship Lev into hand and redraw. Alright, so surprise assault for those of you who haven't seen this card in a while. Pretty brutal. There's the Hoojix. It's brutal if you draw well. Is it counting the ship, too? I think it's counting the ship. All right, so there's a two. A couple of... Started off really great, but... Not as bad as it certainly could have been, based on how it started. So, what Surprise Assault does here... Where did it go? Cancel a force train at location. Draw one destiny for each character, starship, and vehicle the opponent has present. Compare your destiny total to opponent's total power, and the player with the lowest total loses the difference. So one, two, three, four. The vehicle's present. The guy's present in the vehicle. Uh, the ship is present, even though it's power zero. So he had a total of ten. Uh, 
Justin drew four Destiny, got a total of 14. So Greg had to lose four cards to his own four strain of one. He lost all power to weapons from hand, a tie cannon from reserve deck, and two dark maneuver talon roll combos from reserve deck. So two sixes and a five off the top. And now the surprise assault is in the lost pile. So now you got to start thinking when Solo hits the table later, is that going to get used again? And it just might. Yep. Dark Maneuver's Talon Roll combo. that a question, CRG? Yeah, this is the non-V combat response that Greg started. Alright, so there's a Blizzard Scout 1 to the docking bay. And there's a Blizzard 4 to the docking bay. And that's going to pull a guy. And I'm sure we'll see two force for Th Thrawn Virtual, who's going to cancel his own Admiral's Order. Interesting. I guess he's done with him. Uh, or he's going to shuttle Thrawn up to the Dominator. Which is also a distinct possibility. Alright, so Hebsley gets back in his ship. And we're going to see that take off. And now we'll see if Ozzel gets in Blizzard Scout 1. If Thrawn gets out. Thrawn does get out. Yeah, it's not one that you see, CRG. It, uh... It's not the most common thing these days, especially with Dark Side running more capital. Oh, sorry, Light Side running more capital ship packages. Um, but you never know when you run into a, a Starfighter combo that you can town roll, or you just run into that uh, Episode Seven Falcon, uh, whether it's in uh, Old Allies or uh, Legend or something like that. All right, so we've got Thrawn inside Blizzard Scout 1. We've got Blizzard 4 there. Everybody else got aboard the Tempest Scout, which then took, shuttled up. And now the pilots, Ozzel and Piet, are getting out and getting them on board the Dominator. Looks like Greg is kind of just solidifying his power. He's currently behind on life force counts because he has more cards on the table. Uh, it's 31 to 39. Even though Silverland has more cards in the lost pile, he just hasn't deployed much of anything. He's got a couple locations and Luke on the table. I have a feeling that's about to change, though. <laughs> so Franklin's going to activate 14, putting him up to 22. Uh, so he can pretty much go look for anything that he wants, and he should know what these cards are, because these are the cards that he drew for Destiny last turn from the Surprise Assault. There's the Gungan Energy Shield. Going to the Endor Docking Bay. Um, so yeah, so these are the, the Destiny cards here. There's a Famba. Oh, he didn't use the once per game peak. Interesting. 
10 Boomas on a Famba. We're going to be reading a lot of cards, apparently. Deploy on your Famba. Twice during battle may draw Destiny. If Destiny less than total number of opponents, characters, and vehicles present, one of them is lost. Opponent's choice. That would explain the R2 and red 5s, because you just draw zeros for Boomas and 7s for when they're for Battle Destiny. An opponent would get to pick one of his vehicles to be lost. But you can do it twice during battle. That could be pretty harsh. We'll get a Leia. She's going to get barriered. Greg will spend his last force to do that. See if Silver Glen has a canceller. No, he does not. We'll see if he pulls the shield to possibly uh, make Shaw lose some force. Yep, here comes the weapons display shield. I guess that means he's going to battle. There's Ray. Ray will get a use pile poll looking at 12 cards. What did he draw? Alright, so he drew the 7, the 4, then it's the effective repairs that he substituted. Then it's the Hujix, and then it's the Holdo. So Holdo would have been activated. He only would have had four. This should be the Hujix on top. And he is going to 3PO and take it into hand. So then it should be the force he spent for the surprise assault. 744 four should be what's left here. Ray will draw the bottom card. No docking bay to run away to. No vehicle weapons available to shoot the Famba. All right. So Silver Clan will initiate battle with just Ray. Leia will get excluded, and Shaw will lose two force. Probably see if they come out of the use pile here. If it's the barrier. And the card he used, yep, it was a dark time. Okay, yep, two cards had a use pile. Yeah, he could have boomed and drawn a one. It would have been less than the number. Unless he forgot that he spent one and he thinks that that card was Holdo. And he miscounted because he forgot he spent one to play the surprise assault. So he was thinking, all right, so the five cards, this will be Holdo. And then that'll put the Hujix right where I need it to use the Booma. And now Ray's game text is going to get canceled by the Blizzard Scout. And now he's going to peek. Oh, he flipped and put Luke out of play. Okay. Now he's going to peek and see what he's got left and see if he can't move the Destiny around. I think he just mistracked. I think he might have forgot he used one. So now he's going to move them over to his force pile. That's going to put the R2 and red 5 combo on top. So he could draw the 7 for Battle Destiny, which will clear two things. And Shaw's going to add a Battle Destiny with a command, which is going to get grabbed. Uh, or he can do the Booma here, and if he does the Booma again... He can draw the zero, which he will, uh, and that'll probably I was going to say, which one do you lose? Probably the Blizzard 4, just because it has the lower power and forfeit. It's got the higher power, but lower forfeit. Yeah, I think that was just a slight mistrack by Silver Glen, because he could have done it with the Hujix to get rid of one, uh, and then done it during the uh, move the cards around like he did, and then got into the zero and cleared the other one 
and basically taken over the docking bay completely and lost nothing in return. And now we're going to see what he draws for Destiny. He draws big boomers, which is a four. And now Darkseid's going to get two here, and they're trying to beat seven. They want to try and get rid of the Famba with and the Booma. Five's a good way to start. Oh, there's the redraw from the objective. And there's a four, which is actually a three because of the Gungan energy shield. And that's another three, so that'll be a total of six. So Ray will cover, he'll get to keep the Famba, and Thrawn's gonna have to die for dark side. Still a pretty good battle for for Silver Glen. Not as optimal as it could have gone, because the Blizzard Scout was still there and he had to lose Ray, but definitely not terrible. Oh, and there's a trample. Does he have any idea what this is? It's a five. Well, he does now. Could he have trampled the Famba? That would have been hot. Crashed vehicle. Or unpiloted vehicle without armor. Well, they're creature vehicles. They're never piloted. They're ridden. So, no, nope, can't, uh, can't trample a creature vehicle. I guess they're smart enough to run out of the way. He does have the Tempest. Well, he can still train for two open space. And uh, he does have the other pilots and the other Tempest Scout and stuff going on up there. But the Booma is going to be a bit of an issue. He might just want to just get the Blizzard uh, Scout 1 out of there, shuttle it up, and maybe possibly move some stuff away. Uh, Tokodana is not on the table, so he can't like move over and then shuttle down. But he might just want to just... Both guys have played their four shields already as well, so neither of them could pull battle plan, even if they wanted to at this point, without some help. Yep. Thanks, Eric. Realized that just after uh, a second there. There goes the Tanta from hand. There goes Jedi Lev from the force pile. Shaw's only got six cards in hand, so it's less likely that he's got stuff to come back with. Uh, he might have another, maybe another vehicle floating around in there that he could battle deployment to get, but I don't necessarily know he'd want to battle this stuff anyway. With the boom is there, and with that 0-7 pretty close by. Because he didn't spend any force. So that's the big boomers right there, and then that's underneath, so he could just 3PO. Oh, he already 3PO to take the big boomers into hand, which I'm just curious to know what this card does, because I haven't seen it in a very long time. Big boomers. More than one card in opponent's force pile. Make opponent use a force. Well, that's pretty obnoxious. Uh, take a Famba or Booma into hand from reserve deck. That's a pretty good function. Uh, if you just drew Weapon Destiny for your Booma, cancel it and redraw it. So if you miss, you get to try again. Uh, so those are all some pretty useful things uh, for this style of deck. And that they're all in a used interrupt as well. So we see the Tantive is gone now from hand. He does have the Falcon in hand still.
which I'm sure Greg is basically just waiting for Silverglen to put in play somewhere before he moves these guys off Endor. They'll kind of just hang out here. And then he'll use the move, fire, shoot text that the uh, Scythe Squadron has. Meander is still in his hand as well. Uh, see if interesting if he's found a gun, if he's found the... Ozzel gets out. Ozzel gets back, gets in the Blizzard Scout. And that shuttles pack up. So he drops off Blizzard Scout 2. And then moves people back up. And then the Dominator moves away. And Ozzel did not get into the Dominator. Can the Dominator only... Yeah, Dominator can hold extra pilots. He didn't put... Uh, Ozzel piloting it. So minor little mistake there. Uh, costing him a couple of power. That's two extra power. And then Greg will draw a bunch. Uh, Ozzel is still piloting the Blizzard Scout. When he did his little shuffle, he didn't uh, take Ozzel off the Blizzard Scout and put him piloting the uh, Star Destroyer. Dominator can only hold one vehicle. So I guess that's why he had to do it that way. Yep, one vehicle. All right. So he had to shuttle that one down to pick him up to then get the one he wanted. Makes sense, Eric. Thank you for that. Certainly a good way to work around your limitations. Uh, Piet's piloting the Dominator. Piet is still piloting the Dominator. Ozzel's not. So he could have had two extra power from having them both piloting it. And if he wanted to, if he does end up getting battled there, he can't just pitch Blizzard Scout 1 uh, for the forfeit because then he's going to lose Ozzel with it. So uh, we'll see if there's a battle here. Silverland would need the Falcon and some pilots. Solo's going ground, so that's not... Let's see if he wants to track some destiny and set something up kind of vicious for that surprise assault from the Lost Pile. It's a lot harder to use in space. Because um, it doesn't, it counts the ships that are present. So, because the characters are present on the ship, not at the location. So here he'd be drawing two destiny, trying to beat seven. That's fairly likely, especially if he can peek. Uh, here he's drawing one destiny, trying to beat nine. That's not going to happen. So. Yeah, it does up the drain on the ground by getting the second resistance character out now with the objective. He's got two unique resistance characters, so his force drains are plus one. So this becomes a drain of two, but he's getting drained for two and two in space, so uh, he'd be he's still behind on the damage output. Although he's still ahead in total life force, so he does have some time to kill here. Uh, Greg's at 27 total. Silver Glen is at 30. Silver Glen can drain for 2 and 2 if he wants. Yeah, if he wanted to go to one of the other ground sites or to Fondor. Alright, so there's the Falcon with Lando aboard for 8 force. So this Falcon is just nothing, because it's only way Episode 7, Chewie, Han, or Rey piloting. 
that make him maneuver 6 and immune to attrition less than 5. And this once per turn is only during battle. My guess is what we'll see from Greg here is dropping another ship, putting a cannon, and then moving. Or possibly by now he's got Meanda, who shoots better. Um, drop Meanda here, possibly with another, with a capital or something like that. Shoot, clear this in the move phase, don't battle. Um, and then see if Silverglund's basically out of ships at that point. Gold Leader, probably the only one that might still be floating around. Why no solo on the Falcon? Interesting question. I'm sure he wanted the plus drain bonus on the ground, plus being able to just get solo out. But, yeah. I don't know if it's almost like he's kind of just throwing this up to the wolves here. There's perimeter scan to get a defensive shield, so I guess he'll get battle order battle plan. Yep. To make Greg have to pay for his drains now. It doesn't seem like it's a very logical play, and maybe that's what it's intended to be. Not intended to be logical. Either playing some mind games with your opponent, making you think what else you got up your sleeve, or maybe he just forgets that those ties can shoot during the move phase. Maybe he's seen Greg lose a cannon early and draw a cannon for Destiny, and he's just assuming he doesn't have one. All right, Greg's activating everything. He could be holding a punch hit. I wouldn't put too much stock in it. Because, again, uh, Greg's not going to be battling. Greg will be firing the ties during the move phase if he shoots at all. All right, so here's Solo going to try the Surprise Assault again. That's going to cancel the Drain, which saves him two Force. And now we're going to see what he draws for Destiny here. He's drawn two Destiny, trying to beat seven. He starts with the five and another five. So Greg just lost three to the Drain instead. Probably see him peel three cards out of his used pile. Oh, all power from hand. There goes a trample and a Tarkin. And surprise assault is now placed out of play. Yeah, if Greg had any shield pulls left available to him, he certainly could have uh, pulled the, the useless gesture shield there. That would have prevented Solo from being able to do that. But more importantly, if he had cold feet available, he could have just canceled the surprise assault. Pretty sure that still cancels that. Did not save any destiny, so unlikely to see him. Uh, battling or shooting weapons at this point. Silverglund's going to 3PO a card. Continue to track stuff around. Still a pretty close game here. Both players down to the, about the halfway point of their timers. And we get an Emperor going to the ground. Certainly less cards that threaten him with the two Obies already lost. And the Dominator moves in front of Lando. But he does not remember to switch his pilots. Still. Yep.
His power seems wrong, though. See, oh, Leia's on table. I'm like, Haha. why isn't the Admiral's order subtracting? Because Leia's out. All right. Silverglen drains for two at the Endor docking bay. Greg loses a Tarkin's bounty and a short-range combo off the top. So there go two fives that he had sitting on top. Pretty high destiny in this particular dark side deck because of uh, the interrupts and whatnot. All right, Ahsoka Tano. Slight power advantage as he also subtracts one from each destiny draw. And there is a rose. So now he can start retrieving over there. And then he's going to use his peak. And he moves both cards to his force pile. So he gets an extra force to work with or an extra card to draw. And it's going to be Ahsoka versus the Emperor. So he's got a one power advantage and he's subtracting one from the destiny. And he can make his opponent redraw if his opponent happens to draw something really good. He draws a five for the Famba. That puts him up to ten. Oh, the Emperor's not completely immune from the objective being flipped. The five's actually going to kill him. Immunity's limited to less than five from the objective. Forgot about that for a second. And there's a four, which becomes a three, which is fine, because Ahsoka is immune to less than five. But he is going to play a force projection here, and he's going to subtract a seven from the destiny. So he's basically going to make that a zero. It's not quite the way the Bright Hope works, where it subtracts from the total power and whatnot. It, the force projection only modifies the destiny. So the destiny basically becomes a zero. So then it's ten to four. So the Emperor, who was going to die anyway, still dies. So that, again, seems like another misplay by Silverglen. Not sure if he thought it worked like the Bright Hope, where it was going to knock his power down and cause some more overflow. Um, or not sure if they forgot that the Emperor is only immune to less than five from the flip side of the objective. There's a lot going on with Legend. There's a lot of moving parts to it. So trying to remember exactly what all these different things do can be a bit uh, a bit taxing. But the Emperor was going to die anyway and not take any overflow, or not cause any overflow, and all that the force projection did there was basically guarantee the same thing. So he used the card for no reason.
pardon me. These guys seem to be stuck here for a second. Shaw lost a card from hand. I don't know if he doesn't remember, realize that the Emperor's... Alright, I guess he did just realize that the Emperor's immune and he was cancelled. So he threw a card away for no reason. So there's a mistake on his part, which he just realized after he lost the Force. I think that's what he was thinking on whether or not he wanted to lose the Emperor or peel six cards. I guess he was going to peel six cards and then went, oh, wait a second. I have to lose the Emperor. So they both lost a card they didn't need to, that battle, so they balanced themselves right back out. Falcon moves away over to Jakku. Yeah. And Darkseid lost Meanda too, which is also uh, troubling for them because their big out here would be to shoot down the Falcon. Um, and Meanda and his tie and the gun being able to just deploy and shoot the Falcon uh, would be pretty helpful um, with Meanda being forfeited unnecessarily in that last battle. That certainly changes that approach a little bit. So now we're in a situation where Darkseid's going to have to give up a drain or just keep chasing him around with the Dominator just to keep blocking while they pay the drain over here and just keep trying to whittle some more cards down. Um, Light Side certainly looks to be in the driver's seat right now, but again, uh, you know, not much of a life force difference. 24-20 total. So still plenty of uh, juice left in both players. But Shaw's having to pay to drain, and that's what's going to add up over the next couple turns. And he's going to have to start measuring whether he believes he still has a chance to win this game or whether he's just trying to maximize uh, as much damage as he can. And with Rose out now retrieving one as well, um, he is going to have to worry about that a little longer. Oh, it's Darth Vader. Vader and Tarkin going in front of Ahsoka. No force left to battle. Dominator will probably just move again. Blocked space drain. Yep. And then he can draw that last card or save it for a grabber. Or barrier bluff or something. And we will... See what light side has to answer that. They can three they three PO'd. Maybe they can find something else. There should be another ray floating around in here somewhere, right? Meanwhile, Silver Gun will just keep doing the drains of two at the docking bay. And he'll retrieve one with Rose. So that right there is going to will win him the game eventually. Drain two, retrieve one, as opposed to opponent paying three to drain for two. That will... Uh, <laughs> he top decks a sneak attack and an Imperial Artillery off the top of the reserve deck uh, for the two force loss. Um, typically you see people play sneak attack to put Imperial Artillery on top of the reserve deck. So that way they have that uh, 7 to draw for Battle Destiny or to use uh, Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith to choke someone. But against uh, 
the Legend deck being able to cancel and cause the redraw. Because this is during battle. It's not battle destiny. It's, it's a during battle action. So, Oh, we've got a Padme canceling Vader's game text. Tarkin will still add a destiny with Vader, so it'll still be a two destiny situation here for, for Dark Side. And there's a Chewy. But I'm going to guess he's not going to battle. Or he's going to peek. He could do that. Use the objective. Oh, he's going to pay one and retrieve one first for initiating the battle with a uh, resistance character. Gets back his R2 and red 5. Tarkin's going to add a destiny. I guess maybe he's just not going to shoot. Or he's going to peek during battle. Like, hmm. Oh, he's just going to draw. And he draws a 7. All right, so he's going to kill Vader. And that's going to leave Tarkin kind of hung out the dry here. And now it'll be up to what... Uh, there's a four. Let's see if he wants to burn the redraw on that. He does not. And in a three, so that's a total of seven. That would mean Ahsoka or Padme has to die to cover that attrition. If Vader's going to have to be lost, Padme's probably got less value, so there she goes. Yep. Vader's game text is restored, but Vader's going to have to go away as well. Tarkin lives, so at least Darkseid does get to drain for free this turn without having to pay. That's a plus, and they'll put something in the win column for them on this one. But Silver Glen did manage to up his differential a little bit by retrieving a card that turn. And he moves the Falcon away. And he'll pay upkeep on Lando. Well, Tarkin does at least have an out. He can run away to this 1-0 site um, just so he doesn't get crushed. Although Shaw may have a... Well, if Shaw has a Gick, he doesn't want to let his opponent retrieve a card for battling. We'll get the drain for two and two. Silver Glam with four, five cards in hand. Nineteen left down. So we might have to peel a few cards here. That'll cut the differential down a little bit. But it seems like Silver Glen is going to win this matchup. I guess the question is going to be is by how much. There goes a rescue from hand. And a big boomers from the used pile. That was a drain of two at Jakku. Here's a drain of two at Endor. I 
There's the Hujix from hand and an R2 from hand. Okay, so Shaw does have characters left, so it's going to be a Mara Jade with Lightsaber. Going to back up Tarkin. And we'll see if there's anything else. Oh, there's an Onyx 2 sighting. Uh, Onyx 2 lets you play a shield when it's deployed. Deploy except as a React, you can play a defensive shield. So that's going to pull Code Clearance, uh, possibly as a way to limit his opponent's retrieval if he should ever play uh, Jedi Levitation or the uh, Effective Repair Starship Levitation combo to retrieve a card it would then uh, get stacked <laughs> and the Dominator is going to move over and the Onyx is going to stay behind to cover that system So it'll just be a drain of two this turn for Silver Glen. And we'll see what he's got left in those two cards. As to whether or not he wants to battle on the ground, retrieving his seven, which is always a good place to start. Chewie could shoot somebody the other one would die to attrition question is, is would he lose both of his cards as well this would come down to whether or not mara can hit. mara can't swing at ahsoka she's immune so mara could hit chewy and then he would go away but uh, ahsoka would be very likely to to live. Being as she's immune to less than five, and so she subtracts one. So he would have to draw six. And we've already seen the Admiral's Orders on the table, the Emperor's in the Lost Pile, and the two Dark Maneuvers combos are also in the Lost Pile. Silverglen will take this opportunity to check his destiny situation. Don't know if he's used 3PO yet this turn. I don't believe so. Nope, he paid one. He retrieved one with Rose. There's no cards in the use pile. So uh, he could certainly set things up if he wanted a particular card. He puts them both on top of his reserve deck and then uses... Maz's castles game text to try and deploy a site and just shuffle his reserve deck. So I guess he wasn't happy with either card. So he decides to shuffle them around. Cat, you already had dinner. Go away. Unless you want to be on TV and be famous. It would still be worth it to do this battle here. Even if he just hit Tarkin. Yeah, you retrieve one for battling. Chewie hits Tarkin. Mara hits Chewie. You draw Destiny. Everybody dies except Ahsoka. It gets one more card back for Dark Side and now for Light Side rather, and then Dark Side has to pay to drain the following set of turns. Yep. Not the card they wanted to see. I would I'm sure would have rather drawn that for Battle Destiny. Mar 
Mara has to swing at Chewie because of Ahsoka's game text. 99.9% .9 sure Chewie's going to be hit here. Hey, look, Chewie's hit. <laughs> Lateral damage. It's a card we haven't seen all game. Not that it would do a whole lot in this situation because he's not really battling the Falcon anywhere. All right, so we're just going to get one battle destiny here. Light side with a four, bringing them up to 15 total. Dark side's going to draw a one, which they can cancel and redraw with Tarkin. He's, he's going to have to do at this point. Try and stop himself from losing any overflow. He draws a five. Now, light side will make him redraw that. You would think... No, it doesn't really make a difference. I guess Sorgon's just assuming whatever he's going to draw is going to be, he's not going to draw another character. So as long as he lives, that's really all he cares about. Maybe he got, would have best, he could have gotten a card of Overflow if he drew another one or two. And then the Falcon will slide over back in front of Onyx. Yep. And now it'll just come down to, does Shaw have a gun for Onyx too? And so we're going to draw a card or two. Because he is going to get drained this turn for at least two. He'll get drained here for two. He does draw more than a couple here. And Shaw does still have a grabber available to him. He activates it all again. So we can only conclude he does not have a gun. And there's a hear me baby for a shield. To get ultimatum. Not going to burn a grabber on it now. I wonder if Greg's thinking about drawing up. He's got him at 17. Nope, he's going to pay in drain. Okay. So we're going to lose the effective repair Starship Lev combo from hand and the Hearing Baby from the use pile that he just played. And he's going to pay to drain for one at Fondor as well. Trying to just take away as many cards as he can at this point. So I'm a little surprised he didn't grab the Hear Me Baby. Just to take one more card away. Unless he's got something left that he needs to pay to do. over the onyx flip-flops and he draws one and saves one he draws them both okay 
And so Hold on, I'll dump another used interrupt back. Oh, looks like there might be something in there that he can pull. There is another Famba in there, so he does have to take the Famba out. Because uh, this pulls Famba, Battle Planes, or Boss Nash Chamber. So he did find a Famba, which he can then cycle the Famba back and draw something else. Activate. Now he's got a couple couple good destinies stuck together here. There goes Scythe 1 from hand. Yep. Not being able to put that combo together and kind of getting his ships stuck apart like this. Uh, I just let the Falcon just kind of run away for a good portion of the game here. Uh, if uh, if Silverglen was having to pay for these drains and the retrieval with Rose and things like that, uh, certainly would be a lot closer of a game. But uh, he'd probably still edge it out. It would be close. All right, there's the second pilot. He found Holdo, who is also a First Order character. I'm sorry, a Resistance character, so he can retrieve one more. And there's Ray as well. This looks like he is going to get this battle off here. And now we're going to see Greg possibly realize his Ozzel kerfuffle that he... Uh, did not bother to fix yet. Although he might actually end up having to lose them both anyway. With uh, Ray adding one to the total and Lando and adding a second Destiny draw and Command being grabbed, uh, Light Side's going to get two draws. They're probably going to be pretty high. So we'll probably see him lose Ozzel and the Blizzard Scout. Just has to make sure he loses them in the right order. Otherwise, uh, he's going to look silly. He does spend his last force for the retrieval, which kind of implies he's going to lose Lando in this battle, and then just move Holdo into the pilot seat. Hey, look, it's a seven. Hey, look, it's another seven. <laughs> It's like you're playing lightsaber combat. Um, so I put them up to 21. 14, 15 total. Uh, which will be the three guys. The ship will get to stay. Just hope he clicks them all in the right order. Piet for six, Ozzel for five, the Blizzard Scout for five. They cover 16. There goes Piet. There goes Ozzel. And there goes the Blizzard Scout one. So fortunately for, for Shaw, at no point in the game did the pilot being on the wrong stuff get messed up he'll flip flop Lando and Holdo will he lose cart can he do that or is Lando yeah he can lose two and send Lando used he could lose two force from hand probably just put Lando out of play to be honest since he is going to get drained here for at least one or two more turns if it was like the late game thing and you wanted to put one more card back um, like it was the last turn that would make sense just lose two cards from hand send Lando used up your differential by one but where we're at now, not quite, uh, not quite going to do it. So we'll see if we see. Shh, 
if Shaw has a way to suicide himself, it's not apparent right now. He can drain here. If he has a guy, he can throw a guy down here and just battle into this. Um, and just suicide himself in the power difference, even if, it's a, even if nobody draws destiny. He can cause two more force loss and then kind of just get out of the game. I mean, two cards from hand from Silver Glen. Um, he may just think about drawing up here. Call it a loss at 16. Because otherwise he pays 6. He drains for 3. Which she could just lose the 3 cards that are in his hand. And then he retrieves one of them next turn. And then he battles. And then he retrieves another one. So he ends up at 18. So the only way this would make sense for Greg would be as if he had a way, if he had anybody else he could put down, just throw somebody here, initiate battle, and just try and suicide yourself out of this situation. But I guess if he's got those two zero sevens situated, he could boom a double zeros and... Uh, Yeah, although they might be a little bit further down. I don't remember how many cards he had left in his reserve deck. Last turn, if the sevens are close enough to the top, where he could even if he three PO'd to try and turn a card over or whatnot, if he could get to them. Oh, Silverglen is going to lose two cards off the top here. And Shaw will pay to drain. He could just move the Dominator away. Silverland so top decks one more card. Pays one, Dominator runs away. Recirculate, let your opponent Retrieve one with Rose. See if they have anything with these three cards that they can also put back. Maybe you get one more drain in here in space. Or maybe you just draw up next turn. There's a drain of two. Barrier from hand. Trample off the top. That's a drain of three, plus one from the Falcon and plus one from the Objective for having the two Resistance characters together. There goes the gun, a short-range combo. And Veers off the top. And Ahsoka's going to drain for one, which will be the one card in his hand at this point. It was Jendon and Onyx 1. Okay, so we had one more ship left. He just couldn't find a gun to go with it. So we're going to we'll retrieve the 1. I'm sure we'll see him 3PO a card to try and pick something up that he can then play use to put back, since Greg doesn't have any force available to grab anything. Or any other used interrupts that he can play. There's a perimeter scan, just to put a card back. Bringing him up to 15 now. Let's seeing if he can't try to get back up to 16 or 17. <laughs> Char Char. Jar Jar's not bad. You're playing uh, all these Weeses to pull Fambas and stuff. It certainly seems reasonable. Yeah, that'll probably do it. One card left in hand for Silver Glen. Three cards left down. He blocked the big drain. 
Hebsley gets to use his once per turn text to subtract the Falcons maneuver, but it's still maneuver equals six because it's just a static six from Ray. Greg can activate his final three cards. And very likely just draw them to stop his opponent from retrieving any extras. Yep, he's going to go to draw phase. Draw one, draw one, draw the final card. So Silver Glen will get a win by 15 here in game number one. 36 to 19 in terms of life force counts. Wasn't a great start for Silver Glen. Uh, with those early battles going the way of Shaw, but uh, he hung in there, battled back, managed to surprise Assault to do seven extra damage, and to, more importantly, not also as importantly, not take four damage of himself. So the silver, the surprise Assault was an 11 force swing, and uh, in a game he'd lost, he won by 15. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty... That's a pretty uh, big key to victory right there, we'll say. So we'll hang on for a minute here and see if they are going to play game number two. Or, or if they will be uh, taking, taking a break, playing game number two, coming back tomorrow. So don't go anywhere just yet. Let's see what they decide. Seeing if they want to start in an hour, or would that be too late for him? That would be 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which would be 1 a.m. for Silver Glen, which is a little too late for him to start a game. So we'll see if they're just going to start now or if they're going to push it to tomorrow. All right, looks like we're going tomorrow. So thank you guys very much for tuning in tonight. Game number two will be tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 11 p.m. Uh, Greenwich British Time, uh, right in the middle of primetime afternoon American football. Uh, we should have game number two between... Bastion and Chris Wirfs later this evening. Uh, Dan Tartaglione should be on to commentate that one. Dan's been a little under the weather, so hopefully he took the afternoon off to get some extra rest. And uh, we'll see you back here in, oh, what's that, about six hours? Midnight, one, yeah, about six hours from now for uh, for game number two of that matchup to find out who our first finalist is. Will it be Chris Wirfs, who won game number one, hanging on and advancing? Or will it be Bastion Winklehouse uh, rallying back after the early defeat and uh, punching his ticket into the finals? And then tomorrow we'll have game number two between Silver Glen and Shaw to find out who will also be advancing to season two of the OCS finals. Thank you guys very much for watching this evening. And uh, have a great night.